people not knowing where the water comes from is not unique to the desert. Uh, I think it's worldwide. <laughs> if you've got a faucet and you turn on that faucet, pretty much the extent of the knowledge is my water comes from this faucet. But what gets the water to the faucet? So this is absolutely a regional problem, but it's also a global problem. Because of the uh, drainage um, infrastructure that we create that gets rid of our free local waters and oftentimes leads to contamination of that water, we're having to import all across the globe you know, more water from elsewhere. So here in Tucson, we get the bulk of our water that we consume in our homes from Tucson water. And the bulk of that water is imported from the Colorado River, which is over 300 miles away. All the canal that brings water from the Colorado to Tucson, that is the largest consumer of electricity in the entire state of Arizona. It is also the largest emitter of carbon in the entire state of Arizona. Wow, that's a crazy story. There's a much better story, much cheaper story, higher quality story, right here at hand. And we put this sign right uh, in the spot where we took this photograph. So then if you look up from the sign, you can see how things have changed since we started planting the trees in 1996. So it turns out that more rain falls on the surface area of Tucson than the entire community consumes of municipal water in a typical year. The easiest way to take advantage of, of this free, high-quality rainwater is just to capture it as close as possible to where it falls. Here, we've got water flowing down the street curb, and we did not have a way for the water to get from street to street side basins. So we cut the curb, and uh, now water enters into the basin, and then we select native trees that are not only low maintenance and the easiest to have success, but we selected food bearing plants. Here are some of the mesquite pods harvested from the mesquite tree. Now we grind these up into a naturally sweet edible flour and I'll show you. Um, here's a jar of some of that flour and uh, then we use this in cakes and moles, pizza crust. So you're actually in an orchard right here. Okay, people don't recognize it all the way, uh, all the time, but once we show them, you know, what's edible, how you process it, how good it tastes, then people realize, wow, the desert doesn't have to be a place of scarcity. It can be a place of abundance. And a place of abundance that is not reliant on costly imported resources, but is reliant solely upon existing on-site resources. This costs the city nothing but we're dramatically reducing flooding downstream. And it costs us nothing to maintain uh, all of this abundant vegetation because there's no irrigation inputs on our part. We never turn on city water to irrigate this. When we prune the trees, we don't toss the prunings into the dump or into the garbage can. We instead drop them right under or next to the trees from which they came. That breaks down into this sponge-like soil that rapidly absorbs the water. So we don't have puddles, we don't have mosquitoes. Um, we're not only harvesting water, we're harvesting biomass. We're reducing trip, diesel truck trips to the dump. They used to cart this amazing fertile resource of the biomass, and then they would bury it and generate methane, which would lead to more climate-changing gases. But instead, we are putting it all right back here, very close from where it came, infiltrating more water, keeping the water longer, uh, making more of it available to the tree, and then growing a bigger, healthier tree that cannot generate more climate changing gases, but sequester more of them. So we've got much more carbon sequestering going on in this tree because it's got much more vigorous growth, thanks to this whole system. To get this to grow, to get this to more out in the world, I think it's very important to actually start right where you are. And in whatever way you can, start to practice, live the changes you want to see in the world. So that when you are speaking to others, you're not speaking from theory, you're not just a bag of hot air, you're, you're actually knowledgeable. You're actually an expert from your own experience. And no one can refute your life experience. We started here at our little homestead and neighbors saw how great this worked and they wanted to do likewise. So that started to generate interest. It also gave us the um, credentials to speak to city 
county um, officials, local businesses. Um, and uh, now things are changing with the city. The city has uh, now promotes water harvesting, whereas before they were not promoters of this. They have rebates, they have a water harvesting manual, um, and they're starting to require it in new development. Um, and this is happening all, all over the world to different extents in various communities. So sometimes it's not a citizen setting the example, sometimes it's the city or the county. It takes a little more time up front to think about it, okay, to do it right. But you do it right and in an integrated way and it costs far less than the way we're typically doing it. So we're not adding more concrete and steel infrastructure at great cost. We're actually reducing it and reducing the overall cost while growing, as opposed to building, resources that grow ever still more resources, such as the food, the wildlife habitat, the shade, the beauty, the improved quality of life.